going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Vegas 95 Tybura versus Spivak 2. Now first things first please hit the like button for me subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't yet and turn on those notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live when we do watch alongs uh, Wednesday nights is defend your units all that good stuff. Leave some comments below on how well you did at, I'm drawing a blank, UFC Abu Dhabi. Um, and uh, yeah, what fights you're looking forward to, if there's any at all. This card is a little bit not great, let's be honest. And check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Johnny K Picks. I put out my early bets, my early picks, my UFC betting cheat sheets, my time prop cheat sheets extra bets here and there i do have free content i give out for long shot parlays so you can join for free or become a join or become a core member 5.99 a month now let's uh go to ufc abu dhabi it's actually a pretty fun card and uh had some good fights had some kind of boring ones but you can't always have a ufc austin if you want to say but um yeah the first fight I swear every first fight is always a decision, but Dumas got that done, used his wrestling, and basically uh, won that way, 29-28. Um, nothing really crazy to say here, um, that he had a clear advantage with the wrestling, and he stuck with it, so good win from him. Uh, Jai Herbert got that done over Bedoya, dropped Bedoya in the first round, and then basically was just the better striker for the rest of the fight. Landed uh, the cleaner shots. Um, Bedoya was trying, but he just couldn't get anything going. Um, yeah, clear win from Herbert. Um, pretty close uh, fight here with Sam Hughes and uh, Dudakova. Dudakova did not win 30-27, though, I will say. But uh, Sam Hughes, you know, she probably got it done second and third round for sure. But uh, yeah, Dudakova, she just slows down too much in the fights as it goes on. And if she doesn't get that first round finish or even second round, uh, she's just not there in the third, and we knew Sam Hughes was going to be there for all three rounds, so she got that one done. Good win from her. Uh, Guram versus Jordan Vucinich. Uh, yeah, very fun fight early. Jordan looked great. He looked crisp. He knocked down Guram in the first round, and then I think he started to fade a bit. It was short notice. He was up a weight class, and Guram started taking over with his grappling and uh, started landing the better strikes, and he got this one done by unanimous decision, so... Good win from him. Good comeback. Good to see. Um, I just don't know where I'm going to be with Guram in his next fight, depending on who he fights. Uh, Shamil versus Dante Mays. Yeah, again, another decision, which I did not see this one coming. I thought Shamil would get this one done, but he was doing very good on the feet early, like within like the first two minutes, and then he just started going for takedowns, and he clearly had the takedown uh, edge over Dante. Dante could not stuff any takedowns, and he couldn't get back up. So, uh, Godziev got this one done. Um, he was smart. He was smart and, uh, I got to give it to him, but it wasn't a finish, but it is what it is. First finish of the night. Here we are. Fernandez versus Yaya. Yaya is not good. Not good at all. Uh, Fernandez got this one done basically by leg kicks. And then Yaya was basically worried about the leg kicks and got dropped right away. So, uh, almost lasted one round sucked. They had the over one and a half. I did think this would go over, but I didn't know. Yaya could not check a leg kick uh, because he was able to outlast um, or he was able to last a Trevor Peak first round. So I figured that could happen, but nope, not this one. So uh, interesting, fun fight, Azamat versus Alonzo. Yeah, Azamat looked like he was a minus 400 or more favorite. Um, I wish I would have put money on him, but I don't know for whatever reason, I just did not feel comfortable. And um, he just proved me wrong yet again. Um, I did pick him, but I just didn't bet him. I wish I would have, but good win from him. He clearly was the better striker, um, faster as well. Alonzo just couldn't couldn't really do too much in that fight. So instead of getting hit, he got hit a lot. I tell you that. Uh, bad bet for me and pick. I picked Brenner. Uh, Joel looked great all three rounds and got the finish at the end. So yeah, uh, maybe Brenner just isn't as talented. He has a I don't even know if he's a dog anymore. Let's be honest. But Joel, he's just super dangerous. He's super big. He's tricky for everybody except maybe a high-level wrestler like Armin where you can just take him down and control him and win that way. So I think that's really the only way you can beat Alvarez. I'll be honest. I don't think you can outstrike him. You just have to out-wrestle him and survive the 
the submissions. Um, interesting fight here. Mackenzie Dern versus Lupita Godinez. Um, I don't know if I agree with that decision yet again, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> Putting on bias because I did have a bet on Godinez. I just thought Godinez was landing the better shots on the feet for sure. Um, basically snapping Mackenzie D- Mackenzie Dern's head back every time she popped her. So I don't I don't know. I mean, look at the damage on the face too. Mackenzie Dern was had more damage, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I th- I don't know. That's all. I'm you just basically what I'm going to come down to is I'm either not betting Mackenzie Dern fights or if I am. I'm betting Mackenzie Dern because she just basically wins a decision every time almost. So it is what it is. Chiesa versus Tony Ferguson. Yep. Kind of figured that was going to happen. Right, guys. Sucks. Eight in a row for eight losses in a row for Tony. Um, I didn't think it would go down like that, which makes it even worse. So we'll just we'll just continue. Figgy versus Vera. Uh, Figgy's good, guys. Like. I think some people might have forgot how good he was or is. I know he's 36 years old, but man, he was dominant in the flyweight division. He was struggling to make weight every time. Now he doesn't have to worry about it. And he looks good. He's using his wrestling, using his grappling. He's got good striking, as we all know. Uh, Basically, I think he dominated Marlon Vera all three rounds. Um, I can't remember if it was a 30-27 or whatever, but clearly won that fight and it wasn't even close. Round two was the closest one, but uh, yeah. Good win from Vicky. Shara versus McCall. I mean, Shara won, but it was it great? No, you should be able to finish McCall. But I will say McCall is very durable. But his weakness is to the body. Shara was starting to get the body shots going later in the fight. But uh, yeah, Olazechuk just couldn't get anything going after like two minutes in the first round. And Shara was able to get those kicks going, land some good shots and basically won that fight yeah i mean that was it was the right decision but i'm just not super sold on shara i was i was never sold on an olazaychuk which is why i picked and bet him or bet a shara but i don't know moving on up there's a time we're gonna have to fade shara umar versus Corey, very good fight very close fight every round except the fifth round uh umar clearly won the fifth round but you can actually make a debate for every round rounds one through four i thought umar won um, at the very least, 48, 47, clearly. Um, like I said, I don't know about that 50, 45, though. That's a little outrageous. I thought Corey at least won one round, and I don't even remember what round it was. Maybe rounds one or two, maybe two. But, um, yeah, 48, 47 was probably right. 49, 46, I can see, but 50, 45, no. But Umar's good. Um, I said it in my breakdowns last time. He hasn't fought the level of competition yet as Corey has, and I totally get that. Um, But Umar has the talent, and as we've seen it there, he fought, he beat a very good Corey St. Hagen number two in the division. So we'll see what happens with Umar next. Um, Also, we have to remember, too, Corey was coming back from his injury against Rob Font. This was his first fight back, so he may have been a little bit rusty. Um, But either way, I think he looked very good. He was able to out-scramble Umar and get back up and not get put in a dangerous situation on the mat but you know you can only do that for so long and then he's starting to get controlled for five minutes or in the fifth round but yeah like i said very fun card here and there had some good fights had some kind of boring fights here and there but on the night though for my picks i ended up going 10 and 3 the only ones i lost were uh the brenner pick the godinez pick and dudakova pick and the rest i hit uh, for my bets, I had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, bet, ten bets, I think I hit four. One, two, three, four. And ended up coming out a little bit ahead, 1.26 units. So that makes seven winning r- weeks in a row. Um, I don't remember how much total that was. I think it's over 20 units if I had to take make a guess. And also, another seven weeks in a row is not that hold on let me get back here it is the easy money live show defend your units parlay hits again for seven weeks in a row crazy so if you do not follow defend your units on wednesday nights and you come out 
you should because this is seven weeks in a row. It would give you a free, easy money parlay, and you'll come out ahead every time. So seven weeks in a row, pretty good. I'm going to make it eight this week with special guests coming up. And all right, that's enough bragging. Let's go to UFC Vegas 95. We have 11 fights. I think a couple fell off, maybe one for sure. The Parsons fight fell off. But um, some short notice people come in here. This isn't the greatest card, not the name value. There's some fun fights. Let's jump right into it. Danny Barlow versus Nikolai uh, Vertenikov. Hopefully that was close enough. But Barlow is a very powerful striker. He's got very good one-twos down the middle. Good left left hand to God, if you want to say. Uh, he keeps his range well. He's got good counters. He can mix in some wrestling and grappling if need be. Good volume on the feet. He's very durable in his last fight. he was uh, I think he broke his arm, and he ended up still getting a knockout in the third round. So, um, very like I said, very durable, very tough, very quick on the feet. Um, Nikolai, though. UFC debut, he's making it on this fight. Short notice, unfortunately, but it is what it is. You got to take that fight. Powerful striker as well. He is durable, too. He can be taken down at times. Um, he, his striking, you know, it's more so loopy strikes. I wouldn't say it's more technical right down the middle like uh, Barlow's could be. But, um, you know, solid fighter. He's going to push forward. He's going to try to get that knockout and go for the knockout. But, um, yeah, I got to go with Barlow here. I just think he's the more athletic guy. I think he's the better MMA guy. Striking power, I think it does favor Barlow. But like I said, Nikolai, he, if he lands, he can knock you out. But, you know, he's going to have a five-inch in, reach disadvantage. And, yeah, I got to go with Danny Barlow on this one. I just, I think he gets this one done. Let's make that short. Let's make it sweet. Next one. Oh, Shara Lampus, Gregorio versus Tashiyami Kazama. And Gregorio, solid striker. He does have good power in his hands. He can wrestle and grapple if need be, but he's more so a striker. He can slow down a little bit as the longer the fight goes, but he's durable. He's going to stay in there. Um, Kazama, he's more so a grappler. He's got good submissions. His takedowns are just okay, though. Um, his striking is not great. He's been knocked out. Very early in his first two fights in his uh, UFC career, um, I got to go with Gregorio here. He, he's got the power to knock out Kazama. I don't think Kazama is going to be able to get that grappling going. I don't think Kazama's UFC level, to be honest. Maybe Gregorio isn't, but in this fight, I know who the better fighter is, and it's Gregorio. Um, I just don't think Kazama is going to be able to get his game plan going with the grappling, to be honest. I'll make that this short and sweet. Uh, on the feet, it's going to be night and day Gregorio. So give me Gregorio to win by, I'm going to say, first or second round knockout. And yeah, so give me Gregorio. Let's go. Next one is going to be another rematch here from the Dana White Contender Series. Stephanie Luciano versus Talita Elencar. And like I said, they they both fought to a draw on the Contender Series. Uh, Ellen Carr was winning rounds one and two with her grappling and she kind of faded and survived the round three, but Luciano was able to get a 10, eight and that's why it was a draw. Um, I will note in that fight, Ellen Carr did take that fight on short notice, which is probably why she gassed in the third. So throw that out there. I just wanted to run it back. So if anybody didn't know how that fight played out, Alan Carr was winning rounds one and two very clearly. She gassed a little bit because she took the fight on short notice and Luciano was able to get a 10-8. That's how it happened. But Luciano is technically making her UFC debut right now, but she's a very good striker. She pushes forward. She can mix in some wrestling and, and uh, grappling herself. Um, she's not really dangerous anywhere. Um, doesn't really have a lot of finishes. Both these fighters are green. They have under, what, seven and six fights. So, you know, they're still working. She's very young, 24 years old. Um, she does have good cardio, obviously, as we've seen in the last fight against when they fought. Um, she was there in round three, but she was getting taken down left and right in rounds one and two. Uh, Alan Carr, very good grappler. Uh, striking isn't all that great. She does like to push a little a pace early, try to get the rest, uh, the grappling and wrestling going early. Um, she can be a little hittable sometimes, and her takedowns aren't the greatest. But if she does get you down to the mat, you're not getting back up. 
and she's got very, very good grappling and very good submissions and control on the mat. So, yeah, like I said, they fought earlier. You know, uh, Alan Carr was winning rounds one and two. Very clear. She gasped. So I'm going to pick Alan Carr to win again. I think if she's going to have a full camp and she was able to out wrestle and out out grapple Luciano, I think she'll be able to do it for at least two rounds and win a decision here. I don't see this fight ending. Um, But Luciano, you know, she's going to be a little bit bigger and she does have decent takedown defense. But like I said, if Alan Carr is able to take you down, you only need one takedown. And if you're able to get her down, or if Ellen Carr is able to get Luciano down, I don't think she's going to be able to get back up. And I think it can happen for two rounds. So give me Ellen Carr to win by decision again. I think she writes the wrong. She was clearly winning the, that first fight, and then she just gasped in the third. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, both these girls are, you know, they're very young in their MMA careers. And, and Stephanie is clearly younger by nine years. So. Give me Alan Carr to win, and she's the underdog, I believe, even though it doesn't say the odds. Uh, I'll go with the dog here, where she was clearly winning until third. Uh, next one is going to be Yana Santos versus Chelsea Chandler. And we all know who Chelsea Chandler is, the real deal, holy field, as Cody would say. But Yana Santos, okay striker. She does decent volume. She's very good in the clinch. She likes to push up her opponents up there and hold her, hold her, hold them up against the cage. Takedowns are pretty decent if she wants to go for those. Her takedown defense, though, isn't that great. And then when she is taken down, she can be easily controlled off her back. But very good cardio, and she's durable. Chandler, okay striker, not technical at all, but she does pack a punch when she lands. Uh, good wrestling. She's very strong. She's durable. She really she hasn't fought the better competition. Obviously, that's going to go on the Yana side. She's fought way better competition, but um, she's going to be way stronger, and she's going to have the wrestling to get Yana down. And I don't know if Yana should get uh, Chelsea in the clinch because, again, I think Chandler is going to be stronger. So um, I'm going to go with Chandler. I do think this fight is very close. Uh, I think the odds are very close. I think it's close to a pick em. Maybe Chandler's a slight dog. But I'm picking her one more time here. I just think she can get that wrestling going. But on the feet, it could be a little close. But maybe Chandler lands. If she lands, she might have the more damaging shots. But Yana will definitely have the more uh, volume and technical shots. So you can, depending on what you want to do, you know, you just depends. But give me Chandler to win this one by decision. I don't see a finish, but I just think she'll get those takedowns. Next one's going to be Carl Williams versus Jonata uh, Denise. And Carl Williams, smaller heavyweight, but he's an okay striker. He's definitely a more so a wrestler. Very good takedowns for the heavyweight division. He gets his opponents down pretty easily. Um, pretty good cardio for heavyweight and wrestle heavy game plan. So he can be there for at least two rounds. He can get that going. Uh, he doesn't finish anybody, unfortunately. He doesn't really have the greatest submissions, but he's kind of like a chain wrestler, if you want to say, and he just controls you ground and pound, and he's told that's his game. So it works. It's not very exciting, but it works for him. I think he's won like eight in a row, seven in a row, something crazy. So like I said, he's got he's got something going, so he might, why change it? But Denise, though, very good striker. He's very powerful. Um. Good kickboxer. He's got okay takedown defense. Um, good volume. He's tough. He's durable. But I don't know what's what's it going to look like after a round and a half. I think he does slow down a lot after round one. Um, but he's very dangerous. He can knock you out in rounds one or two. I just don't know what happens if this fight gets over one and a half or into the third round. I don't know if he's going to have that power. And um, yeah, I have. I'm. Like Denise is dirt, is very dangerous, but I think Carl Williams can be very careful and get the takedown and set it up and uh, basically win by decision again, um, unless he can just outgas Carl or Denise in the third round and maybe get a ground and pound stoppage. But give me Carl Williams to win by decision. Uh, but Denise, I mean, he's going to be live for a KO early, uh, so. If depending on what you like and who you like here. Um, 
I think if you like Denise, if you want to take a shot on him, don't even just do the KO prop or do the KO round one prop. I just don't think he's going to win any other way. If that's, I think that's his, basically his best path to victory. So Williams by decisions, my pick. We'll see where it goes in the week. I don't know if I like it. It's just dangerous. A lot, a lot of these fights this week are so sketchy. So just be careful when you're betting. You just go with your gut. Don't over. Don't try to overthink it because you might. It might be bad. Uh, the next fight, though, we got Carol Hosa versus Penny Kianza again. Another close fight. Hosa, high volume striker. She can wrestle when she needs to, but she doesn't when she needs to, and she does when she shouldn't. One of those fighters. Um, she likes to push forward. She's very strong. She's got good takedown defense, but she doesn't have to worry about that because Penny's not shooting a takedown, even though I think she did recently, but I can't remember which fight it was. But uh, Kianzad, also high volume striker, throws tons of volume. Um, takedown defense is okay. Um, it's very hard for her to get back up, though. If she gets taken down, she can be controlled, and she can be outmuscled against the cage. So if she's pushed up against the cage, which Hosa does like to do sometimes she just stays she doesn't try to get off the cage she just kind of just stays there and that loses her minutes but um i'm gonna go with hosam i'm not super confident i do think she's the better fighter she's a younger fighter i think she's a stronger fighter more well-rounded but again loss win loss win loss win like she doesn't she's not stacking up these wins and some of her wins are very close losses or very close wins so um, I'm not super confident. I do think she's better. It just depends on what her game plan is and, you know, her fight IQ. So, but give me a host of the win by decision. Um, Penny has a shot. If she makes it close, you never know what the judge is. So, but we are at the apex. The judging is a little bit better there. I will say. So it, I'm not saying it's amazing, but it's a little bit better there than in like at like UFC Louisville or anything like that. So Hosa by decision is the pick. Next one's going to be Chepe Mariscal versus Damon Jackson. So Chepe, well, well-rounded fighter. He's got very good cardio. He's uh, pretty durable. He's, I know he's been knocked out three times, but he is durable. He's tough, good pressure. He likes to push forward. He does have good wrestling, good takedowns, um, good scrambles if he is taken down. Um, and his striking is pretty good. So like I said, well-rounded guy, super durable, good cardio. Jackson. Very good grappler. He's got good wrestling, too. Good takedowns. His striking isn't the greatest. He does use his striking to set up takedowns. He's got very good top control if he's um, on top. But he can slow down as the fight fights go on a little bit if he's pressured, which I do think Chepe will pressure him. Um, he had a very close fight against Alexander Hernandez, which I do think he won that fight. I don't know why he went to split, but it was pretty close. But Hernandez cannot stop any takedowns, and he really doesn't have a ground game. I think Chepe's ground game is better. So, you know, I could see Jackson maybe pulling off the upset here, but I'm going to go with Chepe. I just think he's going to be able to do, um, he's going to do well on the feet. And I think he can out scramble, not maybe not out scramble. And I'm, maybe I'm not, that's not the right choice of words. He can scramble his way back up. Let's put it that way or out of bad situations that Damon can put him in early. But I think the longer the fight goes, I think Mariscal should be able to take the, the fight over. So give me Mariscal the win by decision again. Um, I don't really see a finish unless maybe Damon Jackson gets a submission. But I don't think Mariscal has ever been f- subbed. No, he's never been subbed. He's been knocked out three times. So going to go with Mariscal the win by decision in this one. Close fight. Um, yeah, like I said, I can see Jackson pulling it off. But. He's going to have to get the control on Chepe, and I don't know if he's going to be able to control Chepe for two rounds, so we'll see. Interesting fight here. Alan Nascimento versus Jafel Filho, and yeah, Nascimento is a very, very good grappler. Um, Maybe one of the better grapplers in the flyweight division, honestly, but um, his takedowns, though, are just okay. He's got very good cardio. His striking isn't all that good, but it's not terrible. Um, He is durable. He hasn't fought in a while. I know he's tried to fight somebody. I can't remember. I think it was Sumadarji or something like that, and that fight got canceled, but he hasn't fought in a year and a half. So 
a little bit of a red flag. He is 32, so and he does train at Shoot the Box, so he's always in the gym. I'm sure he's he's always in someone's corner as well. But Jafel, you know, I would say he's pretty well rounded. He's a good wrestler, good grappler, uh, very um, solid striker. He does have good power. He does push forward. His takedown defense, though, is just okay. He can be a little hittable on the feet because he is a little too aggressive at times. And uh, he can get hurt. He can get rocked on the feet. But I don't think uh, Nascimento is going to be able to do that. But we've seen him get rocked a couple times, but he came back and then he got the finish. But, um, yeah, on the feet, I do favor Fialho or Fialho for sure. But, man, on the grappling, I favor Nascimento. And I think this is going to be on the feet. Or, I'm sorry, this is going to be on the mat for the majority of this fight. And I got to go with Nascimento. I think once the, once he gets a takedown on Jafel, which I do think he can get, um, and if he takes the back, if he gets on like in um, half guard, like I don't think Jafel's getting up. So again, give me Nascimento to win. I can see a late finish, maybe like a third round, um, like submission, because you know in the Makaya fight he was looking good, and then he got submitted in the third round. So. We'll see. He did take that fight on short notice too, but um, Nasi Mento, I think, is it more so decision. Third round decision play would be a good bet. Maybe I don't know what the odds are, but look at that. Uh, but I like Nasi Mento here. Um, I just don't know. I don't. I don't know. But I can. But Jafel is the more dangerous guy for sure on the feet. So, little bit of a pause. I'm not like super crazy confident. We'll see what happens in the week. I'll think about it more. So, but. Nascimento, I think, gets this one done. Next one, Jarno Aarons versus Yusuf Zalal. And Aarons, solid striker. He likes to push forward. He's got good kickboxing. He's got good kicks. Durable, good cardio. Solid takedown defense. He doesn't really wrestle, but he can. Um, he has been taken down. Even though his takedown defense is solid, he has been taken down a few times by um, Choi, and Gomez even, and that's why mainly he lost that fight, and Nugent was not able to take him down, and he looked very good in that fight. But Zalal is not Steve uh, Nugent. Um, Zalal is very well-rounded, good striking. He's got um, good grappling as well. We saw in his last fight against Billy Corintillo. Um, he does stay at range well. Um he, he's looked he looked really good in the featherweight division um i know you know in, in the past and when he was a bantamweight he had slowed down a little bit but i don't know if that was the right weight class so like this is a different fighter than what we may have be, be thinking in the past like i was very impressed with what i saw with billy Q, against billy q i don't know if billy q was hurt or whatever but he looked very good and he's, he's racking up some wins here i know they were in some lower regionals but they've been all knockouts and the submission so they're all finishes he's getting this one done he's becoming more of a finisher he's still young he's 27 years old i like zalal here um it could play out being close on the feet but if zalal gets those wrestling and grappling going you're gonna see who's the better mma fighter and that's zalal so give me zalal to win wouldn't be shocked if it's gonna be by submission i think that's his be best path to victory um if it's a finish, otherwise I do think he can win a decision. Uh, Aaron's has been subbed once and it was a while ago, but I don't think Aaron's has fought a uh, grappler, the level of Zalal. Let's be honest. So give me Zalal. I'll say decision. I know it's boring. I think all these fights are, <laughs> they're just really not a lot of finishes. I don't know. It's just me. And speaking of not finishing, any fights javid basharat versus chris gutierrez is next and basharat super well-rounded guy he's got very good grappling he's got solid striking good takedowns he's very durable he can be hit a little hittable on the feet sometimes but he's got very good cardio and good pressure um his last fight looked really weird against Eamon zahabi i don't know if he was scared of zahabi's power or what but yeah, he looked funky. Um, he lost that fight clearly. We'll see if this is going to be a um, bounce back spot for him. But we have Chris Gutierrez, uh, solid striker as well. He's got amazing leg kicks. He's, that's what he's known for. He's got good cardio. 
He can be a little hittable uh, on the feet, though. He can be taken down. He can be controlled. He does try to work himself back up. Um, he has he does have a pretty decent get up game, if you want to say, but he doesn't really have the greatest grappling. Um, I think Bashrat will definitely have the better wrestling. Definitely have the better grappling. But on the feet, you know, you can make a case for both guys. You know, but Bashrat just needs to worry about those leg kicks early. Um, so other than that, I like Bashrat to win. I think he's going to be able to out grapple and out wrestle Gutierrez and win a decision again. So um, the only thing you'll have to worry about is just the Chris Gutierrez leg kicks. And I think other than that, I think he's going to be able to get this one done. So Bashrat by decision. Again, another decision. Main event time. We got Marcin Tybura versus Spivak. The second rematch in the last fight. I think it was like four, four years ago, maybe. Um, Tybura won by decision. Basically won all three rounds. Uh, but Spivak was young. He was like 24, 25 at the time. Um, so he's grown. He's fought better competition since then. And, and Tybura's getting a little older. He's still fought good competition, too. He still had some good wins. And, you know, he's losing to Tom Aspinall. So that we can't say anything bad about that. So, but Tybura is a well-rounded guy. He's got solid striking. He can wrestle and grapple if need be. Solid takedown defense. He can slow down a little bit as the fight goes on, as m- most heavyweights do. But very durable um, and very tough. Uh, I know he's been knocked out like four times, if I want to say five times. But the people that he's getting knocked out to are like Tom Aspinall. And I think even I think Derek Lewis knocked him out or something. I can't remember. Let me see. Uh, Sakai, Shamil, that's not the greatest Derek Lewis. So like power punchers that do have good good power um but spivak he's a very good wrestler he he's gonna go in there and basically take you down as quickly as, as possible he's got good submissions when he gets you down good ground and pound he's pretty durable himself i know sagan was able to knock him out but um it looked like he kind of maybe broke a rib or something and he kind of gone was able to like keep hitting the same spot and he didn't like that um but his striking is okay. It's not the greatest, but he's a wrestler. He's not going to go in there doing something he doesn't want to do. Uh, he's going to try to go in there and, and out wrestle Tybura and maybe get a ground and pound finish or a submission. This is a close fight. The lines are basically a pick them. Uh, I, I basically am just flipping a coin, but I'm going to go with the younger guy who I think it. Could be making a little bit more improvements. Um, so I think give me Spivak to win. I'm going to say there's going to be a finish, maybe like second round finish here. I think he might be able to get a good ground and pound uh, stoppage or maybe maybe like a head and arm choke if he can get that going. But um, I don't think Tybur has ever been submitted. No, he hasn't. So. We'll see. This is five rounds, so it's a little sketchy here. I think Tybura is the minute winner later in the fight, like rounds four and five, if it gets there. But I think Spivak can do enough. If it does go to decision, I think he can do enough in rounds one, two, and three, and maybe, maybe, maybe rounds four. So, you know, Tybura, I'm just going to go with the younger guy, with Spivak. I think he can get the wrestling going. Tybura was was getting... Um, out wrestled by Romanov for basically almost 10 eight of that round. And Spivak can do that for sure. I think he's a little, he's better than Romanov for sure for the, in the wrestling department. So Spivak, I'll say second or third round finish. Don't know if it's going to be a knockout or sub, but we'll see what happens. Um, don't blame anybody for picking Tybura here again, but I think we know usually, usually, rematches don't end the same way so we'll see what happens i'm just gonna go with spivak here but all right guys those that, that was the 11 fights a pretty quick um bang bang done <laughs> this is a shorter video uh but yeah thanks for watching please hit the like button on your way out leave some comments below wednesday night again defend your units we're gonna do our live show bet for the easy money parlay go eight weeks in a row so definitely want to tune in for that and get that parlay so you can be on the the winning train if you want to say uh appreciate you uh watching as always see you next time and as always happy fight night